everyone and welcome to our new series of In Conversation with a regular interview series in which we sit down with clients and talk in depth to them about the impact of coronavirus on their business. The steps they've taken to adjust their business to the pandemic and how they're addressing the recovery phase as we emerge out of lockdown and what impact this has had on their longer term plans. My name's Claire McCracken. I am a corporate and commercial partner at national law firms Waitmans based in Glasgow. I'm also the regional office head and lead the firm's owner managed business group in the Glasgow office, providing advice to business owners on mergers and acquisitions, funding, and more recently, supporting clients with focus and practical advice in relation to legal issues arising out of the COVID-19 pandemic. This week, we're delighted to be joined by Brian Fulton. Brian is Finance and Operations Director at Holdfast Entertainment Limited, a company based in Glasgow, as well as being on the board of Glasgow Chamber of Commerce. Brian, many thanks for joining us today. It would be good to hear from you as to how your business has been impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. Firstly, would you give me a little bit of background about you and your business, please? Hi, Claire. Yeah, as you say, I'm the Finance and Operations Director at Holdfast Entertainment. Uh, we run two large venues in Glasgow, uh, the Garage Nightclub and the Cat House Nightclub. The Garage holds 1,800 and the uh, Cat House 750. We run uh, nightclub events every night of the week at the Garage uh, and we also run concerts. Uh, and the Cat House, it's five nights a week. And again, we run concerts, promoters like regular music and DF uh, user venues uh, a lot throughout the year. And how has your business fared since the Corona? Uh, virus pandemic hit the UK? We we traded up until the Friday the 20th uh, when the Scottish Government said that we needed to close. Um, the numbers did dip in the final week um, but um, the, there was a real debate from us whether to remain open or not but we, we saw advice from our uh, insurance broker and they said to ensure that, that we should remain open until we were told we had to close. So, so that's what we did. Since then, uh, we've, we've been shut completely. And what steps have you taken over the last eight to 10 weeks or so uh, to adjust the business to the lockdown restrictions? Um, and what changes have these brought about for you? Um, we, we furloughed all our uh, staff, bar myself and, and our payroll administrator. Uh, we did keep marketing teams running at first. Uh, we ran online. Uh, club nights. We uh, we had our DJs come in and do various different sets, uh, either from their homes and, and or from the venue. Uh, but as the picture became clear that we were going to be shut for uh, a good long while, we decided that uh, there was no point in carrying on that. Uh, we would ramp up uh, a big reopening campaign once we knew when we could get back open. So since then, everything's been uh, been closed. And in relation to your staff, how have you uh, managed to maintain en engagement um, and their welfare? Obviously, if, if you're closed, that you know it, morale is important. And have you accessed yep. the government's funding scheme for? Uh, you said you'd furloughed workers. Um, and how easy has that been to access? Um, how, how have your workforce reacted? Um, and have you had to take any other steps uh, in relation to employees, such as you know? Um, laying people off, redundancies, recruitment freezes and, and redeployment and the like? Yeah, we're 95 percent of our staff are under the age of 25 so they have been training all their lives to just speak solely online to people over social media and um, so we we've kept communications going quite well. We run online staff uh, pages, that's the way we communicate to staff uh, anyway because we're, we're not a nine-to-five office set up so um, Previously, we used to do a lot through staff meetings after shift, but uh, with that, with that um, not being allowed now under Scottish licensing laws to keep the staff in, uh, we, we moved to an online basis uh, years ago. Um, so that, that has been easy for us to keep in contact with everybody uh, and just make sure that morale is okay. Um, there are also WhatsApp groups where we're quite a tight bunch, uh, specifically from the, the management team's point of view. So. We speak to each other on a, on a daily basis, still more on a kind of friendship basis. Now, initially, we did look at what we're going to do, how we're going to open, when are we going to do this, at, um, what kind of campaigns are we going to run. But given the fact that we have no clear understanding of when we're going to go open from the Scottish Government at the moment, um, that, that's, that's gone to just um, friendship chats. 
from the, the furlough scheme point of view, uh, we paid everybody 100% uh, for the first few weeks. We were a little bit nervous that we wouldn't qualify for the scheme because there was no details on it. But we took the uh, decision because we had reserves to, uh, to continue to pay everybody. Um, so that continued, the scheme kicked in, uh, I applied for the scheme and it, it, I must admit, I, I thought it was really uh, quite easy to do once you'd figured out the numbers that you could uh, apply for and put all the people's details in, uh, it, it wasn't an issue. It was 150 of us, but unfortunately we're spread over two companies, so we had to do everybody individually, which, which took a bit of time. Other than that, it wasn't a problem. Um, the scheme itself, uh, Obviously, we, we ran this for six weeks just to try and let everybody get their heads around the fact that we would possibly be dropping to 80%, uh, depending on how long reserves would last. Uh, we, I told them that after six weeks at full pay, we'd be reviewing it. This was in week one or two. We did review it after six weeks and we dropped it to 80%. I've not had any negative feedback. Um, all the staff have, have been very understanding of the situation that we're in. Uh, I think one of the things that did help us is that others in our, our sector in Glasgow made people redundant very quickly. And I think that uh, our teams were, were thankful of the fact that, that we held on and, uh, and made sure that they were, uh, we could treat them as best we could uh, with the reserves that we had. Uh, everybody's now furrowed to the end of July. Uh, and at that point, we'll review it again, depending on, on specifically what the government scheme uh, has in hold for us going forward. And what engagement have you managed with, with other stakeholders in the business, um, suppliers, landlords, funders and the like? How have they all reacted um, during this? And, uh, and are there any specific things that have worked well or others that maybe haven't worked so well? So funders, we are actually quite lucky. We're, uh, we're self-funded, so we don't, um, we're not beholden to the, to the banks uh, at the moment, which is uh, obviously a good position in the, in the current situation to be in. Suppliers-wise, they've been great. Uh, we, we've used the same suppliers for many years, uh, and they, you know, we've both worked through good and bad on both sides of the relationship. So we were able to, to speak to them early doors. They, they took stock back. Um, that obviously we couldn't use, which reduced our debt to them, and uh, they've given, given, us, given us extended credit terms. Uh, the only ones that I've really had issue with are the, the big utility companies who are faceless and, and quite hard to deal with. Uh, again, our landlords, long-term relationships, and, and they're very understanding, and we're discussing the best way to, to handle the whole situation with them just now. Um, so I think anybody we've had a relationship with have, have been pretty good to deal with, to be honest with you. And have you attempted to access any of the government supported loan schemes, such as the coronavirus business interruption loan scheme, the bounce back loan scheme? Um, and if so, how have you found that experience? And do you have any recommendations to make to businesses who are looking to raise finance through, through those means? Um, if you have applied, what could be changed or could they be made better? At the moment, we haven't. We, we were actually just on the verge of doing quite a big um, property purchase just before um, lockdown kicked in. So we had built up uh, cash reserves to, to look to do that. So we haven't actually accessed anything yet. See bills, I think looking at our cash flows going forward come probably September time, uh, I would want to have access C bills. So we're talking to our, uh, our bank just now in relation to that. And that's where we're at just now. And how have you managed your um, insurance risk on things like business interruption cover, uh, employers liability, public liability, et cetera, um, during lockdown and, and beyond? There's been a lot in the media about insurance. Um, and have you been able to, to make informed assessments about managing risk? Is there enough information out there um, as people return to more normal routines? We, uh, we for our sins, are um, insured by QBE. Uh, we did have an extension in our policy that covered us for a notifiable disease uh, and we thought that this would kick in when uh, lockdown kicked in, but uh, QBE have decided that it's the, uh, the government is the reason that we are closed and not the notifiable disease and therefore we're not covered. Um, this, uh, our policy, uh, I think there are, with our specific broker, there are 60 other businesses who have a similar I know a similar issue, so the, this has gone to the, the FCA, and so all action is on hold just now to wait and see what happens in relation to that. We did look at reviewing our policies, um, and we were going to reduce our, our main cost insurance-wise is, is business interruption, 
um, we were going to reduce that, but talking to our broker, um, one of the concerns would be that if we did have a problem um, in the next few months during lockdown, then when it came to the end of lockdown or easing of lockdown, cover would kick in. Uh, so therefore, they, they've suggested that we keep cover at, at the, the level it's at just now. And to be honest with you, it's quite galling paying for a, an insurance policy when, uh, when you already know it's, it's not paying out for one specific reason. But I, I take the, the steer of the, the broker and I think we're, we're going to keep all this in place just now. And as the, the lockdown is easing, um, I mean, obviously it, it's eased over the last couple of weeks in England and just today, in fact, we're, you know, easing uh, restrictions in Scotland to a certain extent. What plans are you making for the business um, for the next phase and what risks do you see um, for the business as you, as you possibly look to a return to work, whenever that may be? I, that's the rub for us, really. We, we, uh, we're all about... Um, the complete opposite of social distancing. Uh, it's, it's all about social interacting. Um, whether it be a concert or whether it be a, a, a big nightclub event. Um, and that's something that we're really struggling as, a, as a, a group to get our heads around how we adapt to that. Uh, at the moment, you know, our, our business model is set up that, that we need a, a good level of numbers in for it to work. Um, and just now with social distancing that just isn't possible so we are hoping that there'll be uh, a, a change in the way of thinking of how the, the virus is, is managed and, and it will get open phase three stroke phase four um, if not then you know we're, we're going to have to look at um, how we re-engineer re the business but at present because we don't have any specific guidance in relation to this uh, you know we'll, we've seen other countries do things we've seen it in um, I think South Korea uh, and in China that they've opened clubs again and they've used um, heat cameras and also have taken a notification of people's names and addresses so they can be notified if there is an outbreak. Um, again, I think we're quite far away from that uh, in Scotland and in the UK generally. We just need to wait and see as the, as the, as the landscape changes how we can adapt and get open again. Uh, and as you look to to reopen, um, obviously you said that you know you may have to adapt the business. Um, do you see that there's any opportunities that are coming out of this challenge for you that the coronavirus has, has created for you as a business? I, I think I think it's interesting. You know, obviously with the with the fact that we're closed and reading an awful lot about the just general thinking and, and talking to competitors and, and the way that we 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 can change and adapt. Uh, one of the things, one of the articles I was reading recently on the fact that, you know, club culture normally helps people through these times to, to go out and, and let off steam. Uh, but the fact with coronavirus is, is the exact opposite. You can't actually get out and do anything. Um, I, I think over time, people will really want to get back out and back into the clubs, uh, but they're, they're going to be concerned for their safety. So it may well be that, that people wear masks or uh, you know, there's just a different way of enjoying it. I think we as, as club owners need to look at that and, and need to look at what, what the people will will want out of a, a nightclub going forward. I don't think we'll have any issues with people wearing masks at all. People dress up all the time coming into the clubs. Halloween is one of our busiest uh, nights. So it, it's something that we won't have an issue with. Uh, we, we actually um, have had people in previously with masks on. Uh, foreign students coming in and again not, not a problem for us uh, but I think some clear guidance from the, the Scottish Government would, would make it an awful lot easier for us to, to start to look at adapting and uh, you know and spending the money that we're holding in reserve to try and adapt the business uh, into something that will work in the future. And what support from the government or elsewhere um, do you think you will need over the coming months to help your business get back up and running and, and back to its full potential? One of the concerns that we have is, is in relation to the furlough scheme. Uh, the furlough scheme obviously runs uh, at 80% until the end of July and then I don't have the details yet but the, the general feeling is it's going to drop to the point where um, businesses are asked to contribute 25% of that 80%. Um, I, I get that if, if we were a business that could open to maybe 30, 40 percent of its capacity. That just doesn't work for us just now. Um, the, the business model itself doesn't doesn't work. How we could get people into 
even, I mean, the 1800 capacity venue, I think we looked at it and we could get 120 people in if they all had to stay two meters apart from each other. Um, but from, a, from an actual perspective of what we do and what we offer as a service, social distancing, as I said earlier on, doesn't work. Um, I, I think from the government's point of view, we would love the, the furlough scheme to be looked at from a sector specific way so that we could actually um, continue to pay staff at the levels they're getting paid at just now until uh, measures are eased and we're allowed to open um, in some fashion. And how have the, the last few months changed your longer term plans um, for the business going forward? Uh, long term, obviously, from now on, uh, I think myself and most FDs will be um, making sure they have a, a decent sized war chest should something like this arise again. Um, from the perspective of the, the hospitality trade, you know, our, our demographic is, uh, is, is 18 to 25. My hope that is that, that we can um, we can get back open soon. Uh, the 18 to 25 demographic doesn't seem to be as badly uh, affected by the virus, but the main concern for me is going to be these people's safety and the safety, and specifically the safety of our staff. How we engineer that and get us back open um, is, is is the main focus on any plans of ours going forward just now. Okay, that's great. Um, thanks for your time there, Brian. Um, that concludes this Q&A session. Um, it's been fascinating to hear from you uh, how you and your team have been dealing um, with the COVID-19 pandemic um, and, and also not just your own business, but how you've been helping your employees uh, and how you see longer term opportunities for, for the business and perhaps how you'll need to adapt in the future. Um, if anyone's interested in finding out more about um, Holdfast uh, or the garage or the cat house, then I'm sure Holdfast website or, or the club's respective club's website are probably the best place to start. And I'm sure Brian wouldn't mind being contacted directly either. Um, more generally, this Q&A will be published on the Waitman's website and available through our various social channels. Um, so all that remains for me to say is uh, extend my thanks again to, to Brian and also uh, to the viewers and thank you for joining. I hope you've enjoyed it um, and there will be other Q&As with other clients and contacts going forward. So please do watch this space and keep your eye on our website and our, our Waitman social media channels uh, for more Q&A sessions coming along. Thanks very much.